Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today, we are learning how to spin a bat, but in a unique way because I don't like to be told what to do. I don't. I don't like somebody saying this is how you spin a bat. This one way is the only way. That's a lie. There's lots of different ways. So here are several that I like. There are more, but these are the ones that I really know that are like umbrella categories that you can expand upon in your own practice because we have options here. Here we listen to the fiber, we listen to ourselves, we listen to our wheel, we listen to the colors, to the textures, to the project. We listen to all kinds of different influences when we make a decision. Because like I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> so if you don't like to be told what to do, let me give you some options. So these are the fibers I'm going to be using. This is a pretty rustic, again, windstorm. Uh, I'm doing these all on the same day. Sorry about that. Uh, pretty rustic bat that I carded from locks that really isn't in a place for spinning straight from unless I want something a little bit more chunky. So I'm going to use that as my base. So here I am stripping it down. And you can start off with combed top or any type of fiber that has a fairly grippy, prepped sheet-like quality. Um, you want something that's going to prevent things like Angelina and Silk from sticking into your carding cloth. If you've watched my how to use a blending board video, it's a similar premise. This acts as a protective layer so that way a lot of those stickier fibers will pull up. So here I'm pre-carding it again. So now at this point these locks have been carded twice. And you can see the big difference between step one and step two. You can also see that that small drum, which is called the liquor drum, is collecting a lot of loose fibers that are quite small. They're shortcuts or knots or for whatever reason, they're not going through to the large drum, and that's its job. You can actually stop and clean that out if you want to. Um, it's up to you. So I'm spreading the fiber open. I don't get too picky about this, but you don't want it to clump in a huge mass or else it will clog that space between the little drum and the big drum. And then all of the fiber will wrap around the little drum and you'll be like, WTF, what even happened? <laughs> if that's happening when you spread it really thin, it could be because you're holding it too tightly. If you put too much tension on the fiber as it's going around, it will just wrap around the little liquor drum or maybe your drums aren't set apart. Maybe they're too close together or maybe they're too far apart. Either way, that's one of the things you can mess with. The tension, the density of the fiber going under, and the distance between the two drums. So here we have some sari silk, and I'm going to use a different technique to apply it to our drum. We're not smashing it in there, we're not holding it with our fingers, we're just lightly gripping it and painting it across the top of the drum. Um, Esther Rogers from Jazz Turtle is the first place I saw this technique, um, and she called it painting. Now here with the silk, it's a lot longer of a staple link, so I'm gonna hold a lot further back. Um, you're going to wanna play with how you grip your add-ins to figure out the best um, intensity and location for holding. A lot of fiber is about experimentation and getting familiar with your individual fibers and tools. So if you feel like you have to constantly be changing and experimenting in the beginning of your journey, that's like you're doing it right. <laughs> so then I put another layer of fiber and some Angelina, and Angelina likes to hop off of the drum onto the liquor drum, so I brush it down and I use the full flat of the brush without applying pressure as I rotate the handle. This allows me to just pack the fiber down without scraping the teeth or pulling up any fiber or anything weird. So then I played more silk and more um, contrasting top and then I break it across that line with my knitting needle and pull it off. 
Um, breaking it across the line and pulling it off is not that difficult, but if you're looking for an in-depth technical tutorial, I've left a few below. Um, I find that it's all intuitive. Again, you're seeing those little add-ins that I talked about how they want to hop onto that liquor drum. See how they're hopping? <laughs> I'm putting this bat through in two pieces and spreading it with my fingers to get a greater um, homogenization between the fibers. And I'm not super worried if some of it's going to hop onto the liquor drum. But if you're seeing a lot hop onto the liquor drum, you may want to rotate where you've divided your bat so that way it's not like a sandwich with on uh, like a sandwich on its side so there's bread and then the guts and then the bread you want it to look down and you only see the bread so that way the add-ins and guts are encased and here we see the bean showing you a more freeform technique that you could try <laughs> all right so I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. I want to hear your comments, your thoughts, your feelings, your suggestions for future videos. Put them in the comment section down below. If you like the visuals of this video and you're a Patreon person, you've already seen that I have the vibes music only version of this up there. But if you're not, you could become a Patreon person and buy my groceries, pay my bills keep me having power so I can charge my phone bat or my camera battery. This is not my phone. I do have my phone for notes, so I guess both of those matter. <laughs> but you could also get access to those and the special playlist where they hang out. So you can follow the link down below if you want to do that. Also, you may be curious, this is a Spinolution Queen Bee that I'm spinning on in this video, also pointing to in real life. If you liked that and have any thoughts or questions, you can head over to the uh, link down below labeled Spinolution Queen Bee. That is my shop. I am a dealer and I would be happy to answer questions and uh, enable your spinning adventures with what I think is the best line of wheels and I've tried several. I never really had any like strong affiliation to any of them until I met Spinolution. And actually, I really didn't want to like Spinolution because everybody likes Spinolution. And I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> but then I'm like, ah, there's a reason everybody likes these because they're the best. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to find out more about Spinolution wheels, you can hit me up following the link down below. And until next time, bye.